always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Hey guys, and welcome to GSMC Entertainment Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Cynthia. Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you all are having a very strong start to your week, regardless if we are all just staying at home and, you know, feeling a little lazy or unmotivated. I feel like we're all on the same boat, but I hope you guys are all acclimating you know a little bit more week by week i know i am i know i feel a little more refreshed starting this monday than the previous one um like i mentioned in my last episode last week that i I took a very fun trip to urgent care last sunday Uh, so my i had a really rough start last week but this week i feel a lot better I've been um, partaking on things that have been helping my mind, body, and spirit. I have been doing a lot of those Instagram live workouts, Zoom workouts. If you are a heavy uh, Instagram user, then you know everyone's on live now and, you know, like doing live concerts, live workouts, uh, whatever it is. So that's definitely helped me stay connected with people, although I am practicing social distancing, as we all should. And it's also just helped me stay motivated, you know, when I'm in a class environment and there are like this morning I did a Zoom workout 9 a.m. I definitely didn't want to do it. I felt so unmotivated and lazy. But the fact that uh, it was in a, you know, class group setting um, and everybody's on Zoom so everyone can like see each other that pushed me to, you know, keep going and Definitely helps me stay motivated during these times. And let's see, on Saturday, I had my air quote night out with my family. We played Uno in our backyard. We drank some margaritas. So that was my way of turning up (laughs) in my backyard, (laughs) two steps outside. But it was fun. It was great. You know, I've been spending a lot of time with my family. Could be a good thing or a bad thing for some. Um... And I also did my first ever live sound bath. So for any of you who follow Karuchi, I love Karuchi. Uh, she announced she was going to be doing an Instagram live sound bath. So for those of you who are like, don't know what that is or like aren't really familiar with what sound bath, um, it's for like meditative purposes. If you listen to Janae Aiko a lot, um, who doesn't? She's like so bomb. I love her music. Uh, Janae Eichel includes a lot of those sound bath effects and sounds in her music, which is why whenever we listen to Janae Eichel, we tend to feel extremely relaxed and calm. There's a lot of healing properties with sound baths. Um, you guys can look it up. There's a lot of great properties and um, benefits to sound bath. So anyway, all that being said, Karuchi did a live uh, sound bath, like 30 minute. I don't know what it's called. Just It was like for 30 minutes. She did an Instagram live with this like sound bath expert. So she was playing all of these super calming sounds and like we all close our eyes, body super relaxed, just like listening to these sounds. And it was such an amazing experience. I felt awake, but so calm at the same time. Like it was very great to practice mindfulness and I was like taken to like another space. So Thank you, Karuchi. If you listen, ever listen to this, I am now hooked on sound baths and I will now be incorporating sound baths every single night before I go to bed, especially because during nighttime, that's when I tend to just like, you know, my anxiety kicks in and I start just to like overthink and think about like the most randomest things, of course, right when my head hits the pillow. So I think doing the sound bath right before them will definitely help calm me, relax me and my body and in turn, help me get a better night's sleep. So all that being said, that's what I did in this quarantine weekend. And 
let's talk about what also happened during this quarantine weekend, which was this rehash feud between Taylor Swift versus Kim Kardashian West and Kanye West. But more like Kim Kardashian West because Kanye tends to sound very silent in these matters. So that, let's backtrack a little bit. I know some of you are familiar. Some of you may not be familiar with what I'm about to talk about. So first came the notorious, I'm going to let you finish, but Beyonce should have won that award speech on stage at the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards when Kanye West literally stole the microphone from the hands of back then emerging pop star Taylor Swift. So that was the beginning of this whole feud, right? And then came Kanye's uh, notorious song about it, which is his 2006 or was his 2016 single Famous from his album The Life of Pablo, which by the way, I wasn't like a huge fan of that album. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> you can disagree with me. Um, so in that song, Famous, there's a specific line. And I know many of you may know this line. It goes, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why? I made that be famous, right? So that song dropped in February 2016, dissolving any hopes that Taylor and Kanye would ever fully recover from the VMA's fiasco of him interrupting her acceptance speech. Um, and Taylor Swift condemned the lyrics through a publicist calling the song um, misogynistic, you know, which of course it is. Um, and so then this feud, of course, intensified when Kim Kardashian West entered the picture. Duh. I mean, that family like lives for drama. So Kim Kardashian West, like, you know, fueled more fire when she released snippets of a phone call between Kanye West and Taylor Swift back in 2016. And in that phone call, it claimed that she proved Taylor Swift was actually approving the lyrics of the song all along. And then Taylor Swift adamantly denied it, calling Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian's account character assassination. But it was only on Friday that fans could finally hear the truth of that infamous phone call themselves, you know, of these two debating, like Kim Kardashian saying, you're a liar, you approve the lyrics. And then Taylor Swift is saying, no, that's character assassination. Like, it's taken out of context, whatever. So this past Friday, the footage of the entire 25-minute call mysteriously leaked on social media. We all think it's Kris Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> and fans of both stars claimed victory, eagerly waiting responses from both Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian West. So, of course, this feud from back in 2016 rehashed now into 2020. Um, and I always wonder, like, how do these, like, recordings and video footage, how do they get leaked? And everyone always tends to pinpoint, like, it's Kris Jenner because – you know, she's all about ratings for their show and she, it's all the publicity stunt and all those things. Everyone always says it's Kris Jenner, you know, she's, she's chasing the bag. <laughs> and so this past Monday, those responses finally came in from Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian and, you know, reigniting this long running feud in the throes of a pandemic. A fact that both of them seemed uncomfortably aware of, you know, like, oh, my God, we're talking about this again. Like, can we move on with our lives? This happened in 2016. But the video did resurface and a lot of new things, a lot of new evidence was uncovered regarding the conversation. And Taylor Swift was the first one to respond after this 25 minute phone call was leaked. She first non discreetly called Kim Kardashian a somebody in her Instagram story. And her Instagram story went, instead of answering those who are asking how I feel about the video footage that leaked, proving that I was telling the truth the whole time about that call, you know, the one that was illegally recorded, that somebody edited and manipulated in order to frame me and put me, my family, and fans through hell for four years. You guys, she said that's all in an Instagram story and somebody, obviously she's referring to Kim Kardashian. Her next story goes, swipe up to see what really matters. 
And then those who swiped up found a donation page for Feeding America, which is a charity providing free meals to families in need right now. And she also urged her fans to donate to the World Health Organization during this crisis. So it wasn't the most unifying fundraiser, but, I mean, it did the trick, right? It's almost like clickbait. She was like, she very briefly mentioned and, you know, directed the conversation about that phone call but then she like changed and she's like swipe up to see what really matters so i kind of like that approach that taylor swift did and i'm gonna come to a very quick break when we come back i'll discuss what kim kardashian said Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to GSMC Entertainment Podcast. So right before the break, I shared with you guys what Taylor Swift first responded um, in response to the 25-minute phone call, that infamous phone call regarding did she approve the lyric, did she not, what was the feud with them. So Taylor Swift first responded And then a few hours later, Kim Kardashian broke her silence and responded to Taylor Swift over the leaked 2016 phone call. She still is insisting that Taylor Swift made her do it. She started off by trying to shame Taylor Swift for roping her back into the feud as millions of people are suffering. I mean, no one can make you do anything. You feel me? Like Taylor Swift wasn't there. She wasn't held at gunpoint. And I'm not like... I know she has been, but, like, in this case, she was not held at gunpoint. So, like, Taylor Swift didn't make her do anything. Like, not everything in life needs a response, and not everything in life should, like, take up your energy. And I feel that's exactly what, like, Kim needs. I don't know. It's weird. Like, she lives for drama. And she responded by saying, and she added Taylor Swift's username on Twitter, at Taylor Swift 13 has chosen to reignite an old exchange that at this point in time feels very self-serving given the suffering millions of real victims are facing right now. Her Twitter thread began. I didn't feel the need to comment a few days ago and I'm actually really embarrassed and mortified to be doing it right now. But because she continues to speak on it, I feel I'm left without a choice but to respond because she is actually lying. So she's still pushing the fact that Taylor Swift is lying and Kim Kardashian continues. The only issue I ever had around the situation was that Taylor lied through her publicist. So then her publicist responds at saying, Kanye did not call for approval, but to ask Taylor to release his single famous on her Twitter account. She declined and cautioned him about releasing a song with such a strong misogynistic message. Taylor was never made aware of the actual lyric and made that be famous. So that is what the publicist said. And that's the statement that Kim Kardashian has an issue with, which I don't understand because if you guys listen to the leaked phone call, it backs up what the publicist and Taylor Swift are saying. He didn't call for approval. He called to ask Taylor to release the song on her Twitter account. And Kim Kardashian said the full footage of the phone call leaked Friday, air quote, doesn't change the narrative. But it does change the narrative because Kim Kardashian was trying to say that she's a liar. She did approve the lyrics, yada, yada, yada. Um, And many Taylor Swift fans would probably disagree with her on that, finding that it does support Taylor Swift, as I just mentioned. 
the snippets that Kim Kardashian released back in 2016 of the phone call between Kanye West and Taylor Swift only represent about three minutes on the conversation, leaving out key context that the fuller version fills in. So Taylor Swift's main complaint was that Kanye never told her he planned to call her the B word in the song. But from Kim Kardashian's three minute snippet that she uploaded in 2016, fans would have never known whether the two discussed that on the phone. So this is why video edits are so sneaky and us as consumers of the media have to be extremely vigilant and careful of how we take these messages because we never truly know the full context of any situation. And time and time again, we continuously hear these celebrities or influencers talking about, it was taken out of context. It, I didn't mean that. They edited that to make me look like the bad guy. You know, we constantly hear this in the media and in the industry. And in, in all of these drama-filled situations, it's always the same thing. So we have to be extra vigilant when we consume the media, you guys. And it's just crazy to me that Kim Kardashian is still pushing the issue that – you know, it doesn't change the narrative, but it completely does change the narrative because you can't compare a three minute snippet conversation, mind you, an edited three minute conversation to a 25 minute conversation that leaked 25 minute unedited footage where we were able to experience the full conversation of what really went on between Kanye and Taylor. So, um, that's why, like I said, it's just very important to be careful with these video edits, especially when people are uploading things to the internet, trying to knock somebody else down or trying to prove a point. We just have to be extra vigilant. And, and in one of the snippets, like, and exactly, I'm going to give you guys an example of what I mean by this. Uh, for example, in one of the snippets that Kim Kardashian released, the three minute snippet I'm talking about, you can hear Taylor Swift saying, yeah, I mean, go with whatever line you think is better. It's obviously very tongue-in-cheek either way. And I really appreciate you telling me about it. That's really nice. So Kim Kardashian last out at Taylor Swift in an interview with GQ, claiming that Taylor was falsely trying to play the victim despite approving the lyrics and famous. And she stated that she is playing the victim. She approved the lyrics and famous from her saying that those exact words. Yeah, I mean, go with whatever line you think is better. It's obviously very tongue in cheek either way. And I really appreciate you telling me about it. That's really nice. Taylor didn't say that because like the way Kim Kardashian twisted the story, she made it seem like they showed Taylor the line where it says, I made that be famous. And then this was Taylor's response. Like, Oh, like go with whatever line you think is better. No, 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 no. Like if you go back to that three minute snippet, she never, they never played that line for her. And the immediate response was never that. So you see how they are very sneaky and twisting the story here and the narrative. So it's kind of crazy. I'm like, wow, like we really thought Taylor was a bad guy this whole time for the last four years, but it's not true. And Taylor Swift, through her publicist, said that Kanye West wasn't asking for approval, but asking Taylor Swift to publicly give the song her blessing, which, you know, she did not want to do without hearing the full song. And which is true. Like I said, Kanye was literally begging Taylor to promote his song through her Twitter account because she has an army of fans that would back her up. And we can see this is entirely true in the newly leaked phone call, you guys. Listen to that 25-minute phone call. I mean, maybe not even 25. If you're like a Twitter user, they posted the most important part of that conversation on Twitter, which is like a two-minute long snippet. And he's literally he literally said word for word, you know, I think it'd be really dope if you posted it on Twitter because you got like an army, Taylor. Like he literally said that. So they definitely twisted things here. But the online abuse that Taylor Swift said she endured from Kim Kardashian and her fans who branded her as a liar and called her a snake would ultimately lead her to take a hiatus from social media. She even said in 2018 that she went through some really low times and the feuding even shaped her 2017 album Reputation, 
which she teased with images of snakes and an apparent dig directed at Kim Kardashian. Um, and more recently, in the documentary Miss Americana, which was released on Netflix earlier this year, uh, she stated that the whole deer made her want to disappear. And so by after Monday's exchange, Kim Kardashian signaled at the end of her Twitter thread that she wanted the controversy to be over. She said she was never going to talk about it again. But I feel like if she truly never wanted to talk about it again and she truly wanted to end this controversy and feuding, then she shouldn't even have responded because now people are, are all of Taylor's, you know, army of fans are back on her page, you know, commenting snake images and rat images because she did twist the narrative and she did twist the story. And I don't really understand how her only issue was with the publicist saying that they didn't approve the lyrics because like I said, in the leaked phone call, they truly didn't approve the lyrics. They never showed Taylor the full on lyrics for the full song. So it's kind of crazy. We're all left to, you know, I didn't really, I don't feel any type of way towards Taylor Swift. I'm neutral in the situation. I don't hate nor love her. Takes a lot of, you know, energy for me to hate somebody. And I don't have a lot of energy to spare. So I can't be, investing my time in hating an individual especially a celebrity i feel like it's so dumb when like people are you know us regular people are commenting on these celebrity pages like you know all of these nasty things like what purpose does that does that serve you it doesn't make you better you know it doesn't do anything for you so why are you taking the time out of your precious day out of your precious 24 hours to go comment something nasty something mean and nasty on someone's page even if it's a celebrity like it just doesn't make sense to me so a lot of people are now doing that to Kim Kardashian West so I feel like this is going to be an online cycle of bullying that's just never going to end because that's just how social media is and I mean of course she does not never want to talk about it again because the phone call 100% backs up everything that Taylor Swift was saying and what she said was true the entire time and of course, what I think is just hilarious over this entire situation is that Kanye West is completely silent over this entire ordeal. You know, he got, he has his wife, his lawyer, Kim Kardashian, they're backing him up 1000%. So that is that on this rehashed feud between Taylor Swift and the West. I truly hope that we put an end to this whole ordeal because I'm sure we are all have more important matters to discuss. So I'm going to come to another quick break. When I come back, I'm going to be talking about hashtag free Aaliyah music. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to GSMC Entertainment Podcast. Moving on to an entirely different subject here. I briefly mentioned about the hashtag free Aaliyah music. So on March 29th, Twitter found itself with this hashtag free Aaliyah music trending. It is currently at number 10 on the U.S. trend charts. The hashtag was born when fans of 
Late singer actress Aaliyah tweeted expressing disappointment that her full discography is still not available for streaming, which is crazy. I'm one of those disappointed fans because her, I love her music. Free, hashtag free Aaliyah music has scored almost 30,000 tweets in less than 12 hours. And again, everyone's asking like, where's the music? You know, like this was supposed to come out in January. On November of 2019, Aaliyah's uncle, Barry Hankerson, he posted a hint on Twitter that her discography would be available on major streaming platforms um, like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, and Prime Music, and he indicated the date January 16th of 2020. So it coincided with the birthday of Aaliyah, and, you know, so we were all expecting that her full discography would be uh, available on all those streaming platforms because they are not. If you guys like type Aaliyah in iTunes, like the, there's only one album that's available, but she has like about three or four, I think. I think three. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And Barry Hankerson used to be the head of the now defunct back, black ground records, which produce several of her albums. So as you can see, they have the rights to her music. And until this day, that promise has yet to see the light of day. Fans are not taking it lightly. I am fans. Me. Aaliyah's followers took to Twitter declaring that her legacy should live on to the future generations. And they believe that her iconic sound should be shared and enjoyed by the public. And people should be able to play her music because she was very much loved. And to this day, she's still very much loved. And I know a lot of fans, I mean, she still has fans all over the world. Thus, the tweet, hashtag free Aaliyah music was born. And Barry Hankerson Twitter account coincidentally is now deactivated after all these tweets this hashtag arose you know free Aaliyah music and yada 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 but I mean it's true can you imagine like you know future generations aren't gonna know who Aaliyah is and her legacy will fade because her music's not out like imagine if I don't know. I'm trying to think of like past legends like Selena. Okay, that's a perfect one. Like Selena, like if her family had all the rights to her music and they just like, you know, completely paused and shut down all her music and made it private and not available to the public. Like a lot of people wouldn't know who Selena is, especially like the, you know, the future, the newer generations. Like we're, we're going to mention a Lee and they're going to be like, who? What? It's the same situation. So. Aaliyah's debut album released in 1994, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, and that's the only one available on streaming. It was produced by very controversial public figure R. Kelly, and this album earned a platinum record and sold a million copies. Hit tracks from the album were Back and Forth, I Love That Song, and At Your Best, You Are Love. Her debut single, Back and Forth, peaked at number five on Billboard Hot 100 chart in July of 1996. At Your Best, You Are Love, meanwhile, reached spot number six in October 1996. So she has a lot of successful hits, and it's just very unfortunate that we do not have access to this music because we all want to be blessed with Aaliyah songs. And... As published by Complex, Aaliyah's uncle, Barry Hinkerson, is the reason for the online absence of her other belonged songs. Background Records produced her two succeeding albums, One in a Million, and her final studio album, Aaliyah. And he still refuses to release the rights, as reported. And the only place you can find these other beloved songs are... They're available on YouTube. So all of the tracks from these albums are available on YouTube. So shout out to YouTube. Thank you, YouTube, for not, you know, taking these songs down. But, I mean, who wants to play music on YouTube, like, with all those ads and everything they have nowadays? Like, it's going to interrupt the song at, like, two minutes. <laughs> and I just really hope that Barry Hankerson, Elias' uncle, gets it together and he actually listens to the people and frees Aaliyah Aaliyah's music I truly do not understand do not know why he is refusing to release the rights 
um, of her music. I mean, I don't, I really don't know. I'm sure it involves money. I don't know, but I hope this changes because we all need to be blessed with our music and the future generations need to be blessed with it as well. So now moving on to this last little part of the last segment of today's show, I want to share with you guys a show that I am so entertained by. I actually finished the full season. Well, it was like a documentary, seven episodes. I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about because it is also a very popular trending topic on Twitter of the newly released Netflix documentary, Tiger King. I am so entertained. I was so entertained by this story. Like, it is truly bizarre. If I could describe this Netflix show, it's bizarre. And I just, I I need you all to watch it and be blown away because I guarantee you that you will watch that show all in one sitting in seven hours and you will completely forget that we are in a coronavirus pandemic because that's just how bizarre (laughs) this show is, Tiger King. Um, In a nutshell, so I don't like ruin it for everyone. Actually, I'm going to have to ruin it a little bit because what I'm talking about deals with something. It's about like exotic animal lovers and owners, essentially like zoo keepers and just like a drama in the exotic animal industry. And like I said, it's just like absolutely bizarre. Like the entire time my mouth is just like open, like, is this real life? Um, so in the show, there's a feud between Joe Exotic. He is a zookeeper, animal lover, exotic animal collector versus Carol Baskin, who she claims she rescues cats, but essentially her business is the same as, as a zoo. She has all of these big cats, wild cats in cages. So I don't understand, but she calls her business the pit cat rescue that they rescue big cats and then they're like left there to die on her property because supposedly these cats that they take in are already malnourished, not well taken care of. So again, I don't really understand how that differs from Joe Exotic's zoo, but hey, whatever. In that show, Tiger King, people speculate that Carol Baskin killed her husband because her husband went, I mean, he went missing. He disappeared completely. And she had the biggest motive for his disappearance because he was a multimillionaire. So, uh, you know, because of this release show, Tiger King sparks police requests for new leads and the disappearance of her husband, which was back in 1997. So Florida chef, sheriff, Chad Cronister is asking fans for new leads in the disappearance of Carol Baskin's husband, Jack Don Lewis. On Monday morning, morning, the sheriff wrote, since Netflix and COVID-19 quarantine has made Tiger King all the rage, I figured it was a good time to ask for new leads. He also shared an image of Lewis, which reveals that the multimillionaire would have been 81 years old now today. That's crazy. As... Tiger King fans may recall, Don Lewis mysteriously disappeared in August of 1997. And since the documentary's release, fans have also speculated that he was possibly murdered by his wife and founder of Big Cat Rescue, Carol Baskin. Because again, she had the most motive. He was a multimillionaire. They were about to get a divorce. If they got a divorce, then she would have lost everything. So, um... Tiger King's Joe Exotic, former Tiger Zoo owner, he also speculated about Kara Baskin's involvement in Don Lewis's disappearance. And Joe Exotic, he is currently serving 22 years in federal prison after being convicted of trying to hire a hitman to murder Carol Baskin. And it's just honestly this whole... This whole situation is so funny. Again, I'm going to just leave it to that. But this like tweet the sheriff shared is just like so funny. Anyway, Tiger King, go watch. It's going to make you forget we're in the coronavirus pandemic. And you guys, that's going to wrap up today's episode here at the GSMC Entertainment Podcast. If you like what I had to talk about today, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, 
all that good stuff. And as always, catch me here next week at the GSMC Entertainment Podcast. I wish you all a happy and healthy and successful week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.